Hey, buddy. Any Pauly Shore fans out there? No, of course not. Uh, so, what are we talking about today? What is this gathering of blades? Hit like and subscribe and comment. Um, you know, I did a video recently um, comparing my Medford Praetorian, and, and the question was asked, you know, what if you don't want to spend, and that was the cheap Medford, that was the $450 one, that was their bargain knife. What if you don't want to spend that, but you want a knife that has G10, very strong lock, big, thick, massive D2 blade, but you don't want to spend $450 to $700 or $800. I got you covered. We got the video for that, the uh, Artisan Proponent. And, uh, you know, do I like the Medford better? Well, yeah. Do I like it nine times better because it's nine times the cost? No. No. The Proponent is a phenomenal knife for 60 bucks. So then I'm looking at, you know, what other knives are considered, you know, really cool and people like to have, but, you know, maybe you don't want to spend anywhere from starting around $145 up to $260, depending if you want the exotic handles and materials. And that's this guy right here, the Bug Out. Arguably one of the best EDC blades of all time. It's a nice three and a half inch blade. It's good steel. This is S30V. Um, it's a great lock. It's super thin and light. You know, it's 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 kind of perfect. It's it's big enough to get your hand on and do some decent work. You know, there's a little bit of you know flex and. But you can get aluminum handles in, but then you're, you're just adding to the price. You can swap out the scales for G10 and other materials, but then you're just jumping up in the price. So what if you want to spend less than half that? What if you want to spend a quarter of that, but still get yourself, you know, a decent little pocket knife, but one that is about this size and around this um, weight class? Now, some of these are going to say, well, this is only 1.8 ounces and that one's 2.7. Okay, well, it's hard to find knives, frankly, that are 1.8. So if that's what you're looking for, you're probably not going to find something much better than this. Um, it's, it's an excellent, it's one of my favorite EDC knives, just because how small and light it is. But are there other good knives in that size and weight class? And even if they're going to weigh more, they're not enough that it's going to make a difference to most people. They come in at a fraction of the price and will serve you many years for well. The answer is yes in my opinion. And I've got some of them here. So we'll start out. Let's see if I can remember the order that these are priced in. I think starting this side to that, I'll start out least expensive to most expensive. And I'll put links to these in the description. So the first one we have is Petrified Fish. This is Sandvik 12C27 steel. The model number is the PF719. Same thing. Liner lock, thin, light, weighs, I don't have a scale here, but this is probably, if this is 1.8, this is probably two and a half ounces, somewhere right in there. So again, very minimalist, very discreet, really nice, thin, very slicey blade in a sheep's foot with a little bit of belly to it. This is a scalpel. It also has no wobble, but it's thin like that bug out, so it's got some flex. The handle is actually a little bit stronger because it's wood over steel liners. So that's where that little bit of extra weight comes from. But this is a very small, very light, wicked action. I mean, it's just lightning fast. It's got a good strong detent. As soon as it overcomes, I mean, that thing just flies out effortlessly. Lockup is good. Blade centering is good. It's a, is it for, this was $27 or something like that? Excellent, excellent knife. I would recommend that. What other knives are bug out-ish that I would recommend? Well, the one downside to this one is it's the only one here that doesn't have a pocket clip. And it's not one hand opening. So for that, you might say, okay, well, that's really not in the bug out class. But for the size and the shape and the weight and the thinness, I'm going to put it in there anyway. I don't care. It's my video. I can do what I want. You're not my supervisor. So what we've got is a 440C stainless blade. About the same. That is a three and a half inch, well, three and a half inch cutting edge. The blade itself is actually closer to 3.7. But it's still in that bug out size. It is still in that bug out thinness. 
and it is a lockback. So it is, you know, it has that margin of safety. It's not one-handed opening, doesn't have a pocket clip. But if you wanted a more traditional knife that uses polymer and, you know, more high-tech materials like that to keep the weight down, this has got G10 over plastic liners or some kind of fiberglass liners. This is incredibly light. This is very thin, very nice lock, very nice action. But if you wanted to have a bug out type of experience, that thinness, that lightness, again, right around two and a half ounces, that just melts in your pocket and you forget that it's even there, I would recommend that guy. This is the Brother 1592, 440C, G10. No blade wobble, lockup is good. But the, but the lock spring is, is nice. You're not going to accidentally um, push that. That is a great alternative to a bug out. If you want to spend, I think that's less than $30. We'll get the exact prices. You'll, you'll, I'll put the links in there. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Now, a little smaller than the bug out, but I think just one of the best EDCs ever made and puts it in that category because it is very light. You've got Micarta over thin steel liners. Those liners are lightened under there. So they have machined out material to make that lighter. You've got D2 steel with a really beautiful drop point jimping. You've got your, uh, whatchamacallit, your uh, hollow grind. On this one, I don't, this one is on phosphor bronze washers. So it's not as fast as the ball bearing blades, but it's just, Wicked smooth. Very nice liner lock, good lockup, perfect blade centering, very deep pocket clip. It is right hand only, but it is tip up only, which is my preferred. Um, you do have a whole lanyard hole there. It's a little bit smaller. So we'll move these down as we compare each one. It is a little bit smaller than the bug out. It's probably closer to the size of the bug out mini, but I'm going to put it in that very small, thin, clean lines. I mean, there's some similarities there. Very nice, clean, uh, purpose-built, you know, just to be a light, easy to snap open, do your cuts, close it one-handed. I'm going to put it in that category. But maybe that's a better competitor for the bug out light, but it's in that range. We're not going to get down to, well, this one's got a 0.2 of an inch light. Yeah, I get that. But you look at that side by side, the blade's not that much shorter. The handle's a quarter inch off. Now we're getting into some of the more, I think, nicer knives in this group, starting with the Civivi, but I've got two artisan cutleries. One of them is a Sirius. This uses uh, ARP, RPM 9 steel, which is a powder steel. It's basically just a scooch up from D2, very similar characteristics, however, with a nice satin grind. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Drop point, almost a spear point. Incredibly sharp. Jimping here, which is because that's your finger, uh, your top uh, flipper. This is a, a top flip, a front flip. I'm not as crazy about it about front flips because kind of like doing the spidey flick that everyone just seems to be crazy about because that's the what the cool kids are doing these days until they find something new that they can practice and show off. Um, I, I don't like front flippers because it, it requires you to hold the knife a certain way and it's easy to not get it right. It, it's just one of those things. I, I just want to pick up the knife and, and I can pick up any knife on this table um, that's a one-handed opening and instantly I'd feel the thumb or I'd feel the flipper and I can instantly open it properly and quickly the first time, every time, blindfolded. That, so that's why I actually like the fact that they have that uh, thumb stud. There's no way for the spider flick guys that just walk around spider flicking all day. They're like one step off from the, uh, the balisong, the, the butterfly knob guys who just walk around flipping the knife. Meanwhile, if they were in an actual knife fight, while they're sitting there dicking around with it, someone would just punch them in the face. But whatever. <laughs> Do what you want. Just my personal opinions on it. Um, I like the action on the thumb. It's just so much easier. It's faster. It's an easier deployment. It's less critical to how you hold it. And oh, it shifted in my hand and it came out part way. That never happens with the thumb. It just, boom, got a nice strong detent. It's in the right place. It's comfortable. It's grippy with those little bits of machining on there. And so for that, it just flies open every time. 
That knife, I think in some ways, I actually prefer it to the bug out because this comes in at less than half the price, but it's beautiful G10 with milled out steel liners underneath. It's very, very light. You got a titanium machined pocket clip. Between the two, this feels like a more premium knife. If you were to pick these up and didn't know anything about the brands, you go, oh, this is very nice, but the plastic makes it feel cheap. It flexes. It's almost too light in a way that it just makes it feel a little bit more like a toy. It's not. This is a serious little knife. But to someone who didn't know the difference, you'd pick this up and look at the machining on the G10. You'd see that really nice titanium pocket clip. You'd look at the grinds. You'd go, if you, if you said, what do you think is the more premium knife? You'd pick this nine times out of 10. I love this knife. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite EDCs because it's just a little bit bigger for my hands. The blade's about the same, but I can just get a little more grip on it. It's not much heavier. It's very light, but it, to me, it's, it just feels, it's got a little less flex. It just feels a little bit more substantial. And another one, from this is CJRB, that's Artisan, but Artisan is the parent company of CJRB. And that's the Scoria. And this is a beautiful sculpted micarta. You've got that three and a half inch blade. This is also AR RPM 9, so it's that just one cut above D2. This comes as a flipper and it comes with thumb studs. Personally, I'd rather see it get rid of the flipper just to clean up the lines. I would love it if that were gone because this works so well. And for people that do like the Spidey Flick, it is there so that you can flick it. Look, see, I actually can do the Spidey Flick at times. Uh, <laughs> I just don't think it's the best way to open it personally. But again, whatevs. Um, so anyway, you got the, uh, you've got a really nice blade. Very, very sharp and slicey. The action's smooth. This is on ball bearings. That's on ball bearings. These actions on here are almost as good, in some cases better, than this. Now this, I've got that pivot adjusted just so. So it actually, the action on that is really, really sweet. I mean, when you pull in the lock, it's like no resistance. Took a while to wear into that way. I had to sit there fidgeting on the couch for a while, driving my wife crazy, just flicking knives. But it did, you know, eventually loosen up. But I find that a knife like this has a really sweet action and flies open every bit as fast. That's on bearings. Love it. Those are what I consider really good. Down from the cheap sub $30 knives up to your $59 knife. That was $59. I think this was $69. The most expensive knife here. I mean, for the price of this, you could buy this one and both of these <laughs> and have three knives. Um, you know, if you just want something super light, super sharp, very slicey, honestly, and you want to go as cheap as possible, but you want the one hand opening, I'd say go with the Petrified Fish. It's a very sharp pointy blade. This blade, it's a high grind. I mean, it's a flat grind all the way up to the, to the, to the spine. This is a knife made for slicing. You can just, I mean, it's wicked, wicked. It's well-made. The steel is okay. It's not premium like that, but again, you could buy four of these and have change left over for a couple tacos for what you'd pay for this. So that's why I like that knife. I think absolutely that's one to be considered. If you want a bug out style, super light, super thin, very slicey and capable, but very clean, nice lines, simple, minimalist, but you don't want to spend 145 bucks. I did, but I carry this one more than I carry the actual bug out. These other ones I don't carry quite as much. The Civivia, uh, just because it's a little small for my hand. I like the three and a half inch blade one, but I, I'm not entirely sold on the button lock. I wish it was just this, but bigger. That would probably be my primary EDC knife. But other people with hands that aren't that big, that'll probably fit perfect. But these are all very clean, elegant blades. Um, I can't say enough about this guy. It's just the action on this and the, the, the way that it just, I mean, effortless. I'm barely putting pressure on that. But that is a fast opening blade. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and on this, that has a Torx bit. So if you were a lefty, you could reverse that and put it on the other side. Um, now I will say this one, like 
this one doesn't have a pocket clip. If you want a pocket clip, then you're going to probably knock these two out. But when it comes to thin, you know, I didn't want to discriminate too much um, because they're not copies of that. You know, they, they, they have their own merits. But I felt like these ones are so inexpensive, but so well built. Well built. I mean, that action, bang, really nice, crisp. For 30 bucks, you can have that type of a knife. You're just giving up the pocket clip. And you're giving up maybe the superior steels, but you're also coming in at a fraction of the price. So I'm going to try to do some other knife uh, reviews like this where you take the expensive one and, you you know, I've got, you know, uh, you know just like the Medford, raved about it, raved about this, but then say, okay, let's just say you like this style. You like that size. You like the relative lightness. You like the relative thinness. Like that's the type of knife you want. But not everybody's going to want to spend or can spend, you know, 450 for a Medford or 140 bucks plus tax or whatever for this. And you're like, I just need a nice pocket knife, but I don't want something bulky. I don't want something chunky. I don't care about it being tactical. It doesn't have to have LMAX or super premium steels, whatever. I just need to open Amazon packages. And if once in a while I got to run it through a, over a stone or strop it, you know, every other month, it's not a big deal to people. Here's some options. Artisan Sirius, CJRB Scoria, Civivi Elementum, which comes in all colors and different handle styles and all kinds of stuff. You got the Brother 1512 if you want to go a little more traditional, but have that super thin, same size, same kind of uh, silhouette, if you will, in your pocket and in your hand. Very nice, similar materials. And then if you just want to go with something different with a wood handle, that's just super cheap, but still a good little pocket knife. This little guy from Petrified Fish, love it. Very, very cool knife. Doesn't take away from what the bug out is. The bug out is still kind of the king of EDC. Super thin, you know, super concealable, whatever. But you do have options out there. More than what I have. This is just what I happen to have. I try to grab out of my entire drawer knives. All the ones that are closest to that, just to give you ideas of, you know, alternatives. But I think these are really good ones. And of them, if you just want to be cheap, boom, there's your guy. If you want traditional, there's your guy. If you want something that's swanky and, and, and fancy, but still clean, straight, thin, light, minimalist, with some really nice touches that, frankly, the bug out doesn't even have, my money's on this one. I carry this knife a lot. I like it a lot. It's a wicked knife. I don't bother with the front flipper. That, that thumb stud is just perfect. But that's a really, really nice knife. And I said earlier, I'll say it again. If people didn't know anything about the brands and didn't know the relative prices, you didn't tell them. They just picked it up and go, hey, what one do you think is the, the higher end knife? I bet you most people would pick that. They'd look at the beautiful satin grinds. They would look at that the materials. They'd look at that pocket clip as opposed to just a piece of spring steel they pressed into shape. They look at this and go, yeah, this is, the, this is the nice one. This one's cool and this one's, you know, it seems nice, but this one feels like it's a more serious, you know, cut above. And it is. I mean, it's a, Ray Laconico is a damn really famous, nice uh, designer. He may have gone to Artisan to have a manufacture it, but if that was a U.S. made knife, like Benchmade, this would be a $150 knife. So there's, that's probably why it feels more premium. Because they save on labor by doing it in China. And as soon as you say, someone's always going to say, well, you know, that's Chinese D2 steel. It's not the same. I've seen way too many review sites, reputable ones, send this off to a lab. You know, a, a known reputable lab to say, give us back the metallurgy. Test it for Rockwell hardness. Give us the composition, the molecular composition of the steel. And let's see if it's actually D2 or if it's they're just calling it that. It's something else. Too many times, this, Civivi, we, CGRB, a lot of these Chinese companies are coming back and then every time they're legit. They're spot on with the Rockwell hardness. They're spot on with the chemical composition of the blades. They're just saving money by being made in China. But you can't argue with the quality. So there's your options. If you want to buy it bench made, but you don't want to pay bench made prices, now you got some options. You got any questions? Throw them in the comments. We'll talk to you later. I got another video I'll be coming up soon. I've got to review a red dot optic uh, when I 
finished building uh, my AR. So hopefully that upper will be here today and I'll get that thrown together tonight. We'll talk to you guys later.